What does hormesis mean? Yeah, hormesis, you know, I will call the science of good stress. And the word derives from the Greek to excite. And it's how mild to moderate stressors activate or excite the parts of our genome that contain these adversity genes that encode for our body's ability to repair, heal, and regenerate. So essentially, hormesis is the science of mild to moderate stress followed by recovery to help us reach this higher level of resilience and human capability. In the book, I think you described, was it seven kind of key cellular response systems so these are, I guess, the biological pathways that are activated um, or certain genes are activated and then subsequently these biological pathways are activated uh, in response to certain stimuli like cold water immersion or high intensity interval training. Is that the right way to, to think about this? Exactly. So we have pieces of the puzzle of the lifestyle components that help with longevity. They also help with disease prevention. A lot of the things that you just mentioned, whether it's cold water immersion, high intensity interval training, hormesis is the unifying principle that brings together the how and the why these lifestyle components are so critical for us. And the point of convergence is really at the level of our cells. And when we endure these stressors, these um, beneficial types of stressors, they activate seven key cellular response mechanisms in our cells. Essentially, these mechanisms control what I'll call the four R's. They help us resist damage so that we resist oxidative damage and inflammatory damage. They help us repair our proteins and our DNA through our DNA damage response. We have two cellular mechanisms for protein quality control. We have the unfolded protein response and our heat shock proteins. They activate the sirtuin response, so they help us regenerate our energy systems um, through um, their uh, really downstream effect on our mitochondria and building our mitochondria. And they help us recycle ourselves through the autophagy response. So those are really the the key repair and defense mechanisms. And they're encoded in these seven cellular responses. So we think of the stress response as being this fight or flight response, right? Driven by our autonomic nervous system where we encounter a stressful event and it sets down this cascade of adrenaline or adrenaline and the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis where we release cortisol. And that is a split second kind of life or death response that we have when we undergo this fight or flight. What happens at a much slower time scale? are these cellular stress responses. So the stress gets transmitted to the level of our cells. And for hours, days, and and really even a lifetime after our stress exposure, we are activating these responses that help us adapt so that we can become stronger and more resilient so that when we encounter these stressors in the future, we are better adapted. Which speaks to, I guess, the intensity and duration or both being really important because if you are doing one of these activities, be it ice or exercise, but you're doing it in a comfortable sense, you're not really giving your cells a reason to adapt and and become more resilient. Yes, exactly. And this is where um, you kind of want to find this Goldilocks just right amount of the stress exposure. So if you um, gently stress yourself, um, for example, let's take exercise as the sample stressor. If you leisurely maybe just walk in a room, um, being back in the day when we had fax machines, let's say walk over to the fax machine, you know, at a really leisurely pace, that is a low intensity activity, not enough to disrupt homeostasis. So you're not activating these stress responses. And then when you have kind of pushed beyond that, the reason that 
that loses its benefit is that every time you disrupt your homeostatic balance, there's a certain amount of energy your body has to expend to reestablish that balance. So the improvement in our ability to become more resilient based on um, relative to a control level is limited. There's a ceiling effect. So from any exposure, you can gain about 20 to 25% improvement compared to a control But with this pattern of stress and then recovery and the repetition of stress, recovery, stress, recovery, over time, you can improve 60 to 90%. So you can almost double the human potential, but it's not by pushing yourself to an extreme with any of these stressors. It's by maintaining this mild to moderate range followed by recovery. Mm -hmm. So you're consistently just kind of nudging forcing these cells to activate these genes and become more resilient, making sure you're not providing too high of a dose that has some type of deleterious effect. That's exactly right. And the key here is also the recovery, right? Because when you expose your cells to stress, your cells enter a stress-resistant mode where they operate more efficiently, they turn on these housekeeping functions of repair. It's in recovery that you grow preferentially healthier cells, you grow new connections, your body remodels. So structurally and functionally, you're building resilience in the recovery phase. So the recovery is just as important as the stress. What does recovery, I guess, mean to you? I I think it it might mean something different to everyone. But in this context, if we're saying that recovery is really important because you're going to expose your, your body and cells to a particular stress, but in order to reap the benefits of that, you need to get recovery right, what, what does that look like? The recovery looks different depending on the stressor. And, um, and I do detail, um, how to get to this optimal zone for each of the stressors in the book through a protocol and what is the optimal way to recover from each of these stressors. Um, for, for example, if the, um, stressor is intermittent fasting or time restricted eating, the recovery would be a nutrient dense, um, meal plan during the eating window that has adequate protein, fiber, and minerals and vitamins. If the stressor is exercise, the appropriate recovery um, would be some form of active recovery or passive recovery and that also included adequate sleep or rest. If the stressor is psychological stress, um, you know, some type of, let's say, deadline that you had to meet where um, this was something rewarding, it was something that was stressful, but in a way that um, challenged you that you want to be stretched and bent, the appropriate recovery for you to get better at handling future psychological stress would be something that is different than just relaxation. I think people often think if I've gone through a lot of emotional or psychological stress, just reading a good book, um, making a nice meal, um, these are all nice ways to relax and find joy. But you get a deeper level of bioplasticity and your neuroplasticity when that recovery um, incorporates a a level of like non-sleep deep rest. So Um, My favorite ways of doing that, for example, are by being fully immersed in nature. Um, You know, for example, doing a nature prescription, which is essentially letting all of your senses take in nature, um, finding five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can feel, two things you can smell, one thing you can taste. But this full immersion would be an optimal recovery where um, you gain the most neuroplasticity from the exposure to that stressor. So it's different for each stressor. And um, it also depends on where you are in terms of your resilience at a starting point, where um, some people need more of the recovery, less of the stress to be optimized. 
I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess test. Use function to know exactly where your health is today and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, ApoB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of function members have an ApoB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.